Most people who have now tested for COVID-19 have been found to have the new Omicron variant. That's the discovery made by Lancet Laboratories. This as cases and hospital admissions continue to climb daily. Well, let's unpack that now with Head of Clinical Virology at Lancet Laboratories, Professor F.D. here, Vardas. Thank you so much, Prof, for your time. I think let's just start off with how we came about identifying Omicron and how this possibly could have come about through the testing that was done. So Heidi, just to not keep it, not to be too technical, but what happened was that we saw something called an S gene fallout. So in a PCR, you get three genes that are amplified. And um, suddenly this was noted about two weeks ago that there was so, so, something called an S gene fallout, which means that the S gene, which is one of the genes in the PCR, was not actually being amplified correctly. The other two were being amplified. This has been seen with other variants as well, and the alpha variant has that as well. And so we weren't entirely sure what this was. It was certainly something that was different. Um, and uh, the people in the laboratories, the head of the molecular lab and um, the people that work there, the scientists that work there, set aside some of these samples and then sequenced them. And that's when they realized that this was a different variant um, that had many more um, uh, mutations in the S gene. So that was, it was really just noted first on that PCR, and then they did the sequencing when they, no, they, they found out that it was something, something completely different. So we all know that Omicron is fairly new and there isn't much information about this, but what is different about Omicron that you can perhaps explain to us in not too scientific terms, but uh, that it was different that uh, one would say this is definitely not Delta? So the thing that we already know quite um, quite clearly is that it seems to be more transmissible. So it's, it has been transmitted much, uh, much better than the other variants so that more people are infected that come into contact with an infected case. So um, the transmissibility is, is, is better for Omicron. Now, um, the rest of the issues, whether or not the vaccines will continue to work with it, we don't know. Uh, people at the NICD, uh, Professor Penny Moore, they're working on that quite um, uh, sort of quickly and trying to work out whether or not the vaccines will continue to work. The other thing that we don't really know is, um, although we have heard from people that have seen clinical cases, is that most Omicron cases are um, mild or milder than previous COVID cases. We are, we've also um, had uh, reports of most people being infected are in the younger age groups. So we are seeing that. However, the mildness has still to be concerned, uh, confirmed, as well as, as whether or not um, uh, the age groups that are affected are the, only the sort of younger age groups. Prof, just to confirm, we do know that most tests that come back positive are uh, the Omicron variant. It's almost as though Delta doesn't exist anymore. Yes, that's quite right. So it, in a matter of almost um, 10 days, it's, Delta has been completely set aside and Omicron is the dominant variant at the moment. And people are asking us all the time, how do we know that? Well, most of our platforms um, uh, can identify this S gene uh, dropout. We don't really do sequencing routinely. That's far too expensive. Um, so we do random sampling of, uh, of some samples just to confirm that it is Omicron. About 10%, 10 to 20% of the samples are sequenced. But at the moment, it's very clear that Omicron has taken over um, from Delta as the dominant circulating variant in South Africa. Are you able to tell us what kind of symptoms uh, people experience when they go and test? Because we do know uh, that with the beta variant as well as Delta, there were very different symptoms, kind of similar in certain aspects. But uh, are we seeing anything different with uh, Omicron? I know you said it's a lot milder this time around, but is there anything serious that people should be looking out for? At this point, no, Heidi. We don't have any indication that there's going to be anything different or more serious. People that are, have been presenting have been presenting with upper respiratory tract infections, relatively mild. Um, again, another confounder in the whole situation is that we have seen um, some people that have been previously vaccinated becoming infected. So uh, you, you're not entirely sure if it's the Omicron variant that is uh, uh, causing more uh, or less symptoms or because they, they were um, uh, previously vaccinated. So that's the other thing that we need to look at 
and carefully um, to see if vaccine has an impact on the symptomatology of this uh, new variant. How important is it for South Africans to test for COVID-19, even if they aren't um, experiencing any kind of symptoms? Uh, just looking at what Omicron does and how transmissible it is, should people be going to test? Well, I think more than, uh, than, than testing, people need to take the precautions that uh, we, we all are very aware of and familiar with to prevent infection. So we, we need to keep away from crowded spaces. We need to maintain a social distance of 1.5 to 2 meters. We need to wear our masks, hand sanitize. All of those things are very, very effective in stopping um, the spread of coronavirus. So testing is really only if you are symptomatic or you have been in contact with cases of Omicron uh, infected individuals. Really, I don't think that, that that's important. The most important thing is, of course, uh, get vaccinated. And uh, the sooner you get vaccinated, the sooner you become protected. So it's a more transmissible variant. And we do need to stop the spread of this variant. And the only way to do that is to continue doing the interventions, the non-pharmaceutical interventions that we have been doing, very successful in stopping the spread of, this, uh, um, of the coronavirus, but also get vaccinated. That's the only, only hope that we have. Sure. And then just lastly, Prof, uh, many people are traveling or trying to travel or trying to be repatriated. And uh, there are a lot of tests that need to be done, PCR test and a rapid test. Uh, but many would uh, say that the cost of these tests uh, are a little bit worrying. Um, could you maybe just explain to us why it is so expensive and the amount of work that goes into testing for COVID-19? Well, I think um, um, the, the test, and most people know what the test is nowadays, it's a, it's a PCR test, which is a polymerase chain reaction test, which has a number of different steps, and they are quite expensive steps. So basically, you need to extract the viral genetic material out of the sample, and then you need to amplify that viral genetic material. Um, as you are also very much aware that we had to ramp up our capacity to do that quite dramatically. So, um, you know, from a machine point of view, from a uh, human resources point of view, that had to be ramped up, I think, almost in our lab alone, I think it's quadrupled since the beginning of the, um, of the uh, uh, corona pandemic. And it had to be because there was just absolutely no way that we could keep track of, of the tests or, or um, keep up with the testing uh, requests and requirements. Other tests like antigen tests are cheaper tests and they have come into, into play and are being used. But I think that we do need to, to be quite careful and, and to do quality tests. So the important thing is to get a quality test. We've all seen the reports about the people in the, um, the Dutch flight that, that tested negative uh, when they, they actually boarded the flight, but tested positive when they got to their destination. Many reasons for that, but quality testing is also important. So a lot of different, um, uh, everyone's offering a, a COVID test at the moment, but it has to be a good test and a quality test to, to ensure that you get the right answer. Certainly, I think that's very important for us to remember. I've been seeing a lot of social media reports about how uh, they've been waiting for days for their COVID results, and when they get them, they're negative, but when they test again, they are positive. So I think that is an important point to highlight. Thank you so much for your time. That is Head of Clinical Virology at Lancet Laboratories, Professor Eftikia Vardas. Thank you so much for your time this evening.